We're going to start this video with a progress report from my cat. October is feeling much better behaved now, so that's great. She is falling asleep, though. Don't follow her lead. No falling asleep. Actually, you can fall asleep during this video. It's fine. Just watch it again when you're awake. We're going to talk about experiments, and we're going to... This is, this is a, really a definitions video, but it's in disguise, okay? It's in disguise because it's going to look like an example, but really we're going to talk about a lot of definitions. So remember... Um, we had the definition of random experiments from the last one. This is the same definition that we had before. And I want to talk a moment about what does it mean for something to be a controlled experiment and for something to be a randomized experiment. So control means it has a control. It doesn't mean controlled necessarily in the same way that like, oh, controlled fall. Or like, oh, I'm going to control this marker in the way that I want it. It means has a control group, which we'll define later. And random, randomized means that each group is randomly assigned. Okay, because there's two groups. There's a treatment group, the people getting the treatment, and there's the control group, the people who are getting the placebo or, or, or no effect or no treatment, okay? And, and these have to be randomly assigned because if they're not, like if we just choose, like choose all the people who identify as men to go into our treatment group and all the women in the control group, well, the, the whole idea about the control group is that it's as similar as possible to the treatment group. So you do need to ha have people randomly assigned to those groups. Again, this is how we can get to causation. Let's start with a little example here. Um, and, uh, so Chia Pets, wait, hold on. I can give a, I can give a example of Chia Pets. Chia Pets are those, this, the green, hold on, I'll just show it. Okay. These are Chia Pets. The green things are the Chia whatevers. So these are Chia Pets. You've seen some before. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, made Chia plant a household name. Okay. But a few years ago, uh, Chia gained a new reputation as a diet supplement. Okay. So there was a study in 2009 and a team of researchers recruited 38 men, divided them randomly okay happy to see that the men were randomly divided into two groups a treatment and a control and also 38 women and again randomly placed them in a treatment and control okay so one group was given 25 grams of chia seeds twice a day the other one was given a placebo subjects volunteered to be a part of the study after 12 weeks the scientists found no significant difference between the groups in appetite or weight loss now, no significant difference is another good word. We talk more about that in unit eight. Because things are random, right? And if one group had a, like, a one pound weight loss and the other group had a 1.1 pound weight loss, obviously those are different numbers. You have so many things that you have to think about to talk about whether those are actually different numbers or just due to random chance. And we're going to use n new, uh, math to kind of say, how can we decide? It's really cool. It's one of my favorite units. Okay, that's part of inferential statistics. So let's talk about this example and do some vocab words. So the treatment group. And in this case, we're actually going to have two different treatment groups because we're looking at, we're essentially doing an experiment with men and an experiment with women because maybe it affects them differently because a lot of things do. Okay, and historically, a lot of things were really only designed for men, and then it kind of screwed up things for women. Anyway, that's another conversation. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, believe it or not, it's helpful to look at more than half of your population. Okay, so there are two treatment groups. There are the two groups, right? The, uh, the groups of men and women receiving treatment. And what is our treatment here? 
the treatment was the chia seeds. Okay. Whereas the control group, that's a group that's not retrieving the treatment. So that's going to be very similar. It's going to be the groups of the man and the woman receiving the placebo. This is shorthand. I'll use it quite a bit. If I'm writing down the exact same words I wrote down just above it, I'll do the squiggles. All right. Has blinding been used? We haven't talked about that yet. Blinding is basically where um, people don't know what's happening, basically. Okay, so single blind is going to be the um, participants. Don't know what they're getting. Double blind is neither the participants, the researchers don't know either. Don't know either. When looking at data. Okay. So here, we do know whether the people know, the participants know, right? We know whether they know or not. Because they're given a placebo. So if you're given a placebo, usually 90-something percent of the time, that means you don't know whether you're getting the treatment or not. Okay, so it's definitely at least single-blind. The participants don't know. That's true here. What about the researchers? I don't think it said anything about whether they know or not, so we're just going to assume that they know. If it said they didn't know, then it'd be double-blind. So yeah, we're going to say single-blind. Has a placebo been used? Yes. I think most of us are kind of aware of what placebo means. Placebo just means um, basically fake treatment. Okay. Um, to make you feel like you're getting treatment, there's something called a placebo effect, where just the fact that you're taking a treatment, even if it's just a sugar pill, even if it doesn't work, the fact that you're taking treatment will usually lead to results. Okay, there's so many studies on this. And there's even some studies that show even if you know it's a placebo, you still experience that effect. Okay, which is pretty interesting. All right, random assignment has been used. Yes, we underlined that. Okay, the men were randomly assigned into the treatment and control groups over the women. Okay, and then uh, next question, has blocking been used? We haven't introduced this term yet. So don't think about blocking as like, blocking like that. Think of blocking as putting people into blocks, okay? We did do that, right? We did one experiment for the men. And we did an experiment for the women. So we, we put them into blocks essentially to divide the population because maybe things work differently for men and women. Okay. So blocking is basically uh, um, uh, dividing the population and uh, doing the experiment on both. It could be more, more groups. All right, so yes, the uh, blocking variable was gender. Letter G, what's the response variable? What did we measure? Try to include units. What did we measure? We found no significant difference, but we measured appetite and weight loss. Okay, so it's not super obvious how to answer this, but we did measure appetite. We did measure weight loss. Maybe this is in pounds. Could be in kilograms or something else. Appetite, that might be uh, categorical data. Could be ordinal data. It could be, you know, what was your appetite before? What was your appetite afterwards? Okay, but uh, this, this probably is going to be in words, uh, categorical. 
some kind of categorical ordinal data. We don't know, though. Weight loss is going to be in pounds, though, or kilograms. Can we generalize the conclusion of the population at large? Yeah. As long as this experiment was done well, and as long as we have a big enough sample size, and as long as we're following, following all the requirements from Unit 8, which we haven't talked about, yeah, in general, yes. Because it's a controlled experiment. And again, there's more subtlety to this. But in general, yes. In general, if this experiment was done well, and it was reproducible, then yeah, we would think that there's no evidence to suggest that chia seeds are going to help with weight loss. Okay? Let's review. What are some of the key factors for a well-designed experiment? We do need random selection. We can't choose who gets the control and who choose, sorry, we can't choose who gets to be the control and who gets to have the treatment. It's got to be random. Random selection, we talk about how to do that in the next video, which is the last one. And then if a placebo, oh, if a placebo is used, sorry, I can't read today, the environment of the control and treatment should be the same. The whole idea about control is that we want these to be as similar as possible. We want the only difference well, we want this. I don't need to write it again. This is what we want, guys. <laughs> All right. We really want this. Da -da -da -da. That's why it's in the notes. The third thing is that a placebo should be used with a control group when possible. Um, that's the best way to have a control group is to use a placebo. Um, it's not always mandatory, but it's really good. And if a placebo is used, it should be blinded. Um, some level of blinding should be used, like single blinding. People shouldn't know they have a placebo. Even though the placebo effect is real, like, and, and, and even if people know about it, there's still the placebo effect. It's best to use blinding to, to, to make things as, uh, as clear as possible for that difference. And that's basically it for experiments and observational studies. Uh, we got a good uh, overarching talk about them in the last video. This video, we talked more in depth about a lot of vocab for experiments. So lots of terms here. We got to see them in example. Okay. In the next video, we're going to start talking about different ways of actually taking these samples. Population is the whole thing. We can't usually look at that. We got to look at a subset. Sample. How do we choose? Who's in that sample? Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. But you can go somewhere and then watch the next video later. Bye-bye.